Good morning. I'm attorney Gloria Allred, and with me is uh, a parent whom I represent, Stephanie, uh, of a student at Los Osos High School uh, in Rancho Cucamongo in San Bernardino County. Also with me is my uh, law partner, John West. I'm going to be reading a statement, then Stephanie uh, will express her feelings in a statement, and then uh, John and Stephanie and I will be open to your questions. Recently, many parents uh, whose daughters were and are still students at Los Osos High School in Rancho Cucamonga, California, were shocked to learn that children had been secretly videotaped when they used the girls' bathroom and locker room areas at Los Osos High School. My law firm and I represent many of the girls who are concerned that they may have been videotaped while they were naked or partially naked and were changing their clothes in the bathroom or a locker room where a hidden camera was found. The girls used that room before, during, and after they engaged in a number of high school sports at the school or in, as bathroom facilities. David Arthur Ridden had been an assistant football coach at Los Osos High School until recently when he was arrested and criminally charged with child pornography in connection with this hidden camera incident. There is a pre-preliminary hearing scheduled in his case today in San Bernardino County. While Mr. Ridden is being prosecuted, our main focus is protecting and asserting the rights of girls whose naked images may have been captured without their knowledge on videos on the camera that was found in the girls' restroom. In addition, we're concerned that it has been reported that in fact, that there were other areas mul where multiple electronic devices were seized by law enforcement from Mr. Ridden's home and car that may contain images of these girls. Many of the girls wake up every day wondering if this is the day when they will learn whether or not their naked image was captured and recorded by the camera. Both parents and their daughters need answers to be provided to them as soon as possible about these life-changing events. All the girls and their parents deserve, but have not yet received answers to the following questions. First, what is the process being utilized to identify victims? Second, who is involved in that process? Third, what steps are being taken to ensure that victims are not re-victimized by that process? Fourth, who will view these videos in order to identify the victims. Fifth, how many different girls are captured in these videos? Six, when will the girls and their parents learn if they appear on the secret recordings? Seventh, were images allegedly obtained by Ryden shown, add, or distributed to others? Eight, is there any evidence that images of the girls were circulated on the internet or offered for sale? Nine, what is the estimated time period during which female students were secretly taped while attending Los Osos High School? Today, we are sending a letter to the Sheriff and District Attorney of San Bernardino County asking them to open up a dialogue with us and with my law firm and establish a cooperative relationship with us to provide answers to these important questions. Today, we're also sending a letter to the superintendent of Chafee Joint Union High School District, not only because the hidden camera was found at Los Osos High School, but also because we are concerned about continued victimization of girls there at the high school by other students and the failure of the high school to protect many of the girls after news of the hidden camera incident became public. The district has conceded that, quote, students have made inappropriate, insensitive comments to other students 
regarding this horrific incident, which has caused further pain, end quote. Despite the district's acknowledgement that inappropriate comments have been made, the district has not taken meaningful measures to ensure that my clients and other students are not further victimized by their fellow students. For example, the school has been made aware that the entire girls water polo team, uh, in, in other words, victims of the taping scheme, were taunted with literal cheers of free riding, and that's a quote from the football team, while those young women were practicing yoga on the school lawn. Some members of the football team asked victims why they, meaning the victims, were, quote, so upset, end quote, because they said, quote, it's just some free booty pictures, end quote. Although that incident was witnessed by a team parent and school officials, nothing appears to have been done. One boy is reported to have stood up in class and openly chanted, quote, free ride, end quote with no apparent consequences. Parents and their daughters deserve to know what steps the school is taking to stop the bullying and the taunting of these girls. The students and their parents also wanna know whether students will be questioned at Los Osos High School. And uh, we want to know if, if the parents are going to be notified when they are questioned, because we are concerned that some are being questioned without a parent being notified or being present. On behalf of my clients, I'm also seeking to work cooperatively with the district to ensure that students and their parents are provided with appropriate information to ensure that the process being utilized protects the students' privacy rights and to protect the students from hostility and bullying from their fellow students so that the victims may continue their education uninterrupted. We are hopeful that the district attorney, the sheriff, and the district will answer our many questions and address our concerns, and we will await their response. And now I would like to introduce Stephanie. Um, she is parent of a daughter who is at the high school. Uh, the daughter has uh, participated in a number of sports. And uh, Stephanie will tell you a little bit about her daughter. Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. <clears throat> On August 24th, 2021, the life of my daughter and many of her friends and teammates was irrevocably changed. The actions of the individual who secretly videotaped the girls violated these young women and has caused enormous pain and suffering. To add insult to injury, this violation happened over the course of what could potentially be numerous years and went undetected during the entire period of time. How could something so egregious happen at a school where students should have been safe and where rules should have been in place to ensure that these young women were protected in their most vulnerable state, undressing in what they thought was a private space. When this individual was arrested, why didn't the school take swift action to ensure clear direction and expectations were set forth for students, staff, and teachers to act with integrity and empathy towards these impacted individuals? Instead, the school allowed taunting, chanting, bullying, and shaming to go unchecked for days, despite parents' outrage at their inaction. Parents have so many questions that remain unanswered. And while we understand that this is an ongoing investigation, our kids are forced to contend with the heartbreaking emotional turmoil of the unknowns. Are they on these videos? How will victims be identified and notified? Were these videos distributed or sold? But in the face of what could potentially be a long investigation, more than anything, the school must be held accountable for their actions and their inaction. 
these young women must receive the reassurance that they will be protected from further abuse, bullying, and embarrassment. For the victims and potential victims, my heart goes out to you all. I will continue to pray for justice to be served and for you all to find peace. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie, uh, before we open up for questions, um, I would like to ask you a little bit about your daughter. Uh, how old is your daughter at this time? She's 17. And uh, which sports has she uh, participated in uh, as a student at Los Osos High School? So as a student, she's participated on the girls water polo team, the girls swim team, and the club water polo team, Foothill Water Polo Club, also practices at this pool from time to time, and they've had games there. So many different avenues to where she's been in that bathroom. Okay. And has she also been in that locker room? Oh, and the locker room, yes. Yeah, where videos may also have been taken, even though the camera was found in the bathroom. Um, and... Uh, is she uh, your only child that uh, attends Los Osos High School? Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, are you willing to say uh, which year she's in at Los Osos High School? So she's a senior this year and she's Thank been you. participating in these sports since she was a freshman. And, all right. And so then she uses both the locker room and the restroom as many others do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're gonna open it up to questions. Let's give you a moment to type in your question. Uh, Juan Jose Mendez uh, asks, uh, Stephanie, do you speak Spanish? I do not. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, are there other questions? This is from Rob McMillan. I would add for Juan that our law firm has lawyers who speak Spanish in case that's an issue in your particular family. Yes, or, uh, yes, thank you, John. Or, or for the press, thank you. All right, so uh, let's see if we have another question. Oh, Stephanie, uh, can you tell us what your daughter is going through and what it's been like for her, her mood, if you're, if you feel comfortable saying? Uh, it's been extremely difficult for her, for her friends, um, difficult to go to school, um, nervous all the time, anxious. Um, and it, it's, it's been quite heartbreaking for her father and me. So, and to see her going through this, but I think even more so to see her interact with her friends who are all in the same turmoil over the what ifs and, and what I, and I think Gloria, you said it best. It's this waiting game of waiting for a phone call or a notification and the terror that these videos are out there thank you stephanie in other words the girls feel very vulnerable uh they don't know what's going to happen next they don't know when they're going to be interviewed by law enforcement they don't know if their parents can be there with them when they are being interviewed with by law enforcement they don't know if that will take place in the school or elsewhere they don't know if their parents are going to be notified and can be with them they don't know much. They don't know if they're gonna be shown the video or how many other people will be shown the video or if they are on it with others, whether they're gonna to have to see others as well as themselves or others may see them as well as themselves. So they don't know which part of them is, is shown on the video or if in fact they are on the video. There potentially could be hundreds of young women uh, on uh, the video who were secretly videotaped. So at this point, they have more questions than answers. And that the uncertainty of not knowing is 
is very emotionally troublesome to many of them and to their parents. Parents are naturally protective of their children. They send their children to school, expecting them to be safe. And, you know, we have many questions about how this could have happened. And right now we know that law enforcement is doing an investigation, but the victims really need to have more information because information is power and will help to assure them about what they can expect. Uh, so let's go on to the next question. Uh, Susan uh, is, is inquiring, how do we know uh, that the uh, girls may have been videotaped in the locker room if the camera was found in the bathroom? John, uh, would you like to address that? Certainly. We have been provided information that appears to be very reliable, indicating that the cameras were also found in the locker room area. And uh, we are pursuing that information vigorously and we believe it to be accurate. Thank you, John. Um, and the question from Salvador Duran is, can we tell you how many high school girls were recorded and when did you file the lawsuit? The answer is, we don't know how many. I'm not sure that anyone knows, including law enforcement at this point, how many girls were recorded, but we know that hundreds have used that restroom and that locker room over years, period of years. The question also is, when did we file the lawsuit? We've not filed the lawsuit yet. Uh, but uh, we are sending the two letters that I mentioned today to one to the uh, San Bernardino County Sheriff and District Attorney, and the other is to the Superintendent of Schools of the school district in which Los Osos uh, is located. Um, We are certainly going to uh, look at all the options. We are exploring all the options for our many clients, the girls. We represent some adult girls who were victimized when they were minors by being videotaped uh, potentially in the uh, locker room and bathroom, but who are no longer at the school. Uh, we also represent some um, minors, many, female students who are still at the school and who may have been videotaped. So um, we certainly um, are going to make sure that these girls know what all their rights are and their parents, and we are going to assert all of their rights for them at, in a timely fashion. Uh, the next question is, can we send you a copy of those letters? Uh, we will send you uh, a, a little later today, uh, a copy of the letter to the superintendent of schools. Uh, we are not going to be providing the letter to law enforcement, but we will be sending it today. Um, so all anyone has to do to receive a copy of the letter to the superintendent of schools is, um, is to send an email to me uh, after 11 o'clock this morning, Pacific. Uh, I happen to be in New York right now, but 11 o'clock a.m. Pacific and uh, request a copy of the letter and we'll be happy to send it to you. All right, uh, the next question is, what kind of evidence do we have as of now? We are not sharing all of the evidence that we have. Uh, we are protecting the evidence just in the same way the law enforcement is protecting their evidence but we are willing to share it with law enforcement. And in the event that there is a civil uh, lawsuit, uh, which I will say is likely, um, we certainly uh, will in the lawsuit share why we are filing it and uh, some of the facts that support our allegations. John. Uh, we have evidence that was provided to us by our clients, and right now that's covered by the attorney-client privilege. We have evidence that's being gathered by our investigators, and that's covered by a different privilege. So right now, 
Um, we're not at liberty to share that, but it will come out in the proper context at the proper time, as Gloria said. Yeah, so we have um, private investigators uh, that are uh, checking out the evidence that has been provided, doing a deep dive into it, uh, and making sure that we can corroborate the evidence that has been provided to us. You know, there are many rumors out there, and we want to make sure that we have accurate facts uh, that we can use uh, and that we can share with law enforcement. Uh, these are all good questions. Are there any other questions? So protection for our girls who are still attending and so that they're not further victimized by other students is paramount. Uh, we understand that there is an investigation by the school into certain allegations that have been made by the girls that of the taunting and the bullying uh, by some of the male students. But we need more than that. We need, we need consequences for those who are trying to hurt the girls, who are trying to minimize what happened to them. This is very serious in their lives. I think those of us who are parents know how serious that is for our children to be victimized. Uh, so we need to uh, make it a safe environment for these young women who are still attending the school. Everything needs to be done. It can be a teaching moment, the teaching moment is there have to be consequences for those who are continuing to bully and hurt these girls. They have a right of spe free speech, but there have to be consequences for bullying. It's as simple as that. The school needs to take action as soon as possible. Um, how many girls are we representing now is another question. Numerous, numerous girls and their parents. And uh, more are continuing to contact us every day. So uh, I'll just say at this time, a substantial number, uh, just because I don't have the final number because they're still contacting us, but it's a large group. And we have been having Zoom calls with our large group of clients, parents, and their children, if, they, if the daughters want to participate, they're always welcome. So we'll just say it's a significant number at this point. Uh, there is another question uh, from Juan Jose Mendez. Is it known if there are more suspects involved or accomplices? John? You're looking into that. Um, if we had information, we would not be sharing it right now with anyone other than our clients. Okay. But it is something we would want to know. So, for example, if there are others who have not videotaped but who have received uh, what was recorded on the camera or cameras and who are publishing or distributing or se selling uh, these images, we certainly want to know that. We want to get that stopped. And this is a serious allegation that law enforcement has made about child pornography. And this is what it is. It's not just images of naked women. It's images that could, that are alleged to be and constitute child pornography of minors. This is very, very serious. Um, next question is from Salvador Duran uh, about what is the time frame from when the recordings started? Uh, John, do you want to answer that question? Sure. We, we understand that, that Ryden began working at Los Osos as long ago as 2015 in some capacity. Um, because this thing seems to have gone on for such a long time, we're assuming that it went on for the whole time, but we don't know. That's one of the bits of information we're seeking. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have time for one or two more questions and before we conclude, if there are any additional questions. 
Uh, also, this WebEx is being recorded and we will place it on our Facebook page uh, in the event that you would like to have a written copy uh, of our statements. Uh, please just email me and indicate that and we will send those statements to you. Thank you very much for attending today. And uh, we are gonna fight the good fight for these young people and for their parents. And what we want is we want truth, we want answers, and we want justice. Thank you very much.